Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is my name is a name. My name is Jason Newland. This is let me bore you to sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now, there may be a little background sound at times because I'm recording this in my living room and it's quite early in the day. Well, it's 5.37 p.m. And there are people about. There are people awake outside in the world. So there's always a chance. Uh, do you hear a bit of a garden activity? Also, by that I don't mean hedgehogs and stuff. I mean people. The the gate, the garden gate has broken it, so it's, it's basically the hinge is gone or something so I've been hearing people banging it trying to close it and they keep banging it and banging it and I thought oh, it must be really complicated to to close because I don't, I don't use it. I don't, I don't go out the back. I like the front entrance. And so I went out there just to have a look, just to see how complicated the closing the fence really is, closing the gate uh, really is. Because you know, I got a lot of sympathy for people that have problems with closing gates. It's one of my things, you know. It's just, I'm a compassionate uh, gate closer. It's especially, you know, when it comes to fences and you know the gate in, but you know, just is it? Is the right? It's a door, really, isn't it? It's a door in the fence. It's a fence. It's the hole in the fence that's not a hole because there's a door but then when it's opened there is a hole kind of but my you know huge amount of love and compassion filled my uh, my little toe and so I went out there to a little check to see just how difficult it was to close it because I've been hearing people banging it for a few days now like continuously it almost sound like they're type making a, a running jump really you know and uh, I looked at it now, I'm not a surveyor I'm not a building expert I've never built a fence or a gate it's a wooden fence gate it's not like a gate that you have that's made of metal that you have maybe in the front garden that's not really any point in having it there other than just to wake up the neighbours when the postman delivers and uh, you know that you know the one that squeaks those kind of old age uh, I say old age but I don't know if they're still about anymore but I suppose some people still have gates for their front gardens but it's kind of a bit pointless well not apart from those people that like them of course then they're they're worth every penny um, and uh, I wish more people had them I really do um, in fact just thinking about those 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 little gates in front of people's houses in front of the garden I just feel excited thinking about it. It's weird, isn't it? Just get a real 
Ah, real kind of weird, weird sound. It just came out my throat then, but magnified out by one, you know, and I get that feeling of uh, gratitude for life, really. Those fences, the squeaky fences, and the clicking, the clicking of the metal bit as you let it drop, instead of just, you know, letting it go sl slowly, gently, letting it just click shut, or yeah, that, just letting it like bang shut those fences so every time someone comes with some milk delivery parcel delivery people just coming in and out of the house yeah let the gate slam every single time and then when it slams it doesn't close which means it's not actually secure so it's pointless having a gate because you could just walk in you could just step over it really Anyway, the back gate. I went out there. I thought, you know what? I'm going to go out there. Sometimes I think about doing something and I don't do it. Other times I think about doing something and I still don't do it. But then there's those times. Those times when I think about doing something And I actually go and do it. This is one of those times. So I waddled on down the steps and then rode across the river. Because, well, it's, it's a moat. I live on a castle. And uh, then I got to the helicopter pad and... Uh, because I've got a castle and I own a helicopter and uh, got the helicopter to the gate because the gate is about it's about three miles away that's why I need a helicopter to get to it because my vast land that I own so I got to the uh, got to the gate oh got there I was I wasn't ecstatic I'll be honest with you, it wasn't, I didn't have a, like a, didn't have a tummy full of bumblebees, it wasn't that kind of uh, excitement, it was more, it was, the, it was more of an excitement of, well I've just eaten a kebab, I wonder whether or not I'll get, i to make it home in time to get to the toilet, that, that kind of, the unknown kind of excitement, you know. So I went, I went to the bottom of the, got bottom of the garden, and got to the gate, and I looked at it, and I could see that it was it was wonky. It was a wonky gate, and but not hugely wonky. I mean, it wasn't upside down. It wasn't like it wasn't pointing towards me it was it was still relatively I'm trying to say that word properly relatively that's better it's still relatively in the position that it had once been previously to being manoeuvred however wise it was into a new position whatever that might be called and I, I looked at it and I pushed it closed. And all I had to do was just lift it up a little bit. And then it clicked and it was closed. That was it. That was the whole thing. I didn't need to stand out there for 20 minutes pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and slamming it and slamming it. It's... It, it's, it's... To me, that would be 
like bashing the fridge continuously shouting why can't I get the BBC one I want BBC one and just keep banging it I want the BBC news watch EastEnders keep bashing the fridge like this it's a pointless pointless act or we're going into McDonald's and demanding a straw that works you know a plastic straw you, you can, you can you're not going to get one but I just want a straw that works no cardboard now mate soggy 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 cardboard mm, yum, 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 yum yum soggy cardboard that feeling like scraping on your teeth mm, yum, yum, yum. soggy soggy cardboard in your mouth that's what your milkshake's coming through now lovely 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 I might actually start taking my own straw Because you can go and you get um, metal straws. I think you can actually buy metal straws. Like long ones. So that's what I might do. I might get, I might get a long metal straw and take that in. Or you know what could be good? bear with me here do you know you might not know this because um, you might not have pubs where you're from but in on the island of England (laughs) the island of England on the continent of England on the island of England we have these things called pubs which are public houses they were public houses and often they were actually called free houses which they never were and uh, it's like greenhouses they're not green are they they should be called white houses or well is clear glass white It's, it's pretty much white isn't it it's not green it's never green never was green never will be green why was it called green there's no reason for it oh because oh we grow things oh so everything that grows is green is it no tomatoes well okay at some point they're green but then they turn red cucumbers yeah at some point they okay forget cucumbers um, um, radishes, yeah, radishes, red. Uh, what other things can you can you grow out of the ground in a in a a white house? Um, tomatoes. Yeah, I know I've already mentioned it, but it's worth... There's, I mean, people have always got more than one plant, haven't they? What other ones? Oranges. Citrus, citrus, bananas, bananas. They're not great. Well, at some point they might be green, but then they turn yellow. But then yellow is green, isn't it? Isn't it green and green and blue? Green and pink blue and pink what's yellow was it white and orange that makes yellow I always get muddled up it's very similar to mathematics isn't it you know certain things make different things so, uh, you know and chemicals as well you know certain chemicals mixed together 
can have a creative experience which individually they do very little very little but I didn't used to really do much as colours that's one of my things I'd like to have done I always liked the art well I didn't always but I love the idea I've given up on the idea but I like the idea of being able to be an artist that's something that I would have really have been um, I don't know if the word proud I don't really do pride but um, I'd be ever so pleased with myself I'd feel talented, yeah. I think that's the that's the word. That's the word. I'd feel talented. Because I think with something like art, if you're good at art, then the talent is obviously there. And you know you're talented. doesn't mean you're going to necessarily be classed as the best artistic person in the world but you don't have to be classed as that to be talented just like if you can play a musical instrument you're talented you may not be touring the world on stage playing a piano but if you can play the piano really well, then you're very, very talented. So I, I quite like the idea of being an artist, like being like a you know, being a painter or a drawer but I have zero interest in it and it's because I've got no I just don't have any talent in it and that's the reason why I've got zero interest because if I if I'm unable to do something or even even if I can't imagine myself being able to do something then I don't have any interest in it I don't know if that's weird is that weird so no interest in football because I could never imagine myself playing football because I never played it at school I never bothered with it got no interest in, in rugby or gymnastics because well no rug, rugby definitely not because it's something that would, wasn't for me um, golf is another one that really didn't appeal to me not something I could see myself doing gymnastics possibly not now not right this moment maybe tomorrow but not now I've got, got the body for it now but when I was younger, I think had I had some training and had gymnastics been available at my school for the boys rather than for the girls, which it seemed to be aimed at mainly, I possibly could have been quite good at something. I don't know what, but something. There was just this, um, you know, those things that you you put your hands on, those like circles, handles, or whatever, and you just twist around like a monkey. I fancied the idea of doing that, 
because when I was very little, I've always been quite little, but when I was very little, I had a little monkey that did that. It wasn't a real monkey, but it was a, it was this monkey on these bars, these, that was holding onto the bars, and underneath, at the bottom of it, you pushed in, and the monkey twisted around and around. It was really good. I mean, even now, I think I'd enjoy playing with it. And it wasn't that I saw myself as being like a little monkey. But I did have some characteristics of a little monkey. I was very quick, very agile, very unmoved. You know, I was very, very... I wasn't athletic, but very springy. You know, I wasn't really so much interested in, like, running... Uh, as opposed to I think I'd have been quite good at I don't know it was all kind of make believe really I never got the opportunity to really find out if I would be any good at it But I like the idea of it. But our school was very... Well, the school I I said our school. I mean, first of all, we didn't go to the same school. Unless we did, of course. I can't call it my school because I didn't own it. It's not there anymore. It's now uh, some kind of uh, college for something weird so they had these two schools right tiny little town only about 500 people that's a lie but it was a tiny little town it wasn't big you could live there without a car well I did um, but you could you could literally walk from one side of the town to the other it took a while but you could do it. So people in cars can be quite lazy. I've never driven, so I've not ever been like that, but I see some people and they'll just, they'll drive around the corner to the garage or to the shops just to, to buy a cream eclair, chocolate eclair or something. Or a bag of tangerines instead of walking around no let's get the car let's drive around because I've never had that luxury of a car I've never been able to do that so there and oh I've got an itchy ear sometimes I have itchy ears I remember once I had uh, I used to wear earplugs earplugs um, earplugs sounds like hair plugs doesn't it earplugs they weren't plugs not like you're having a sink or a bath do you have plugs in baths in our countries? Do other countries have baths? Or is it just showers? I honestly don't know. I'm trying to think. What countries have I been to? I've been to Bulgaria. And they had showers. That was in the hotel. So, but they, I don't know if they have baths anywhere else been to France I don't know if I washed when I was there so I can't remember <laughs> I really don't remember 
but I think it was a shower. I think I just pretended to have a wash. I might just, yeah, I think I just turned the shower top on and then just let it run for a few minutes and turned it off. Wet my hair. So, oh, that was refreshing. And went to Spain, but I was only there for the afternoon. I had a can of Coke and a, um, a Mars bar because I was warned about, you know, being careful what I ate when I was abroad. So I figured a Mars bar and a can of Coke should be all right. Always being very, very careful, apart from with plans. Could have had some paella, but then I wouldn't have been able to afford my flight home. What other countries I've been to? So, um, Bulgaria, France, um, what was the other one? Spain, been to Belgium, a Belgian just went for the day. I might have gone to the toilet somewhere. might have gone to the toilet somewhere I don't know where I don't remember that much detail about the trip to Belgium other than there was a riot on the the ferry things got a little bit out of hand for some reason and the only other country I've been to is Ireland the island of Ireland as the uh, politicians like to call it what the what used to be called Ireland I remember For all through my life it's been called Ireland now it's the island of Ireland so we should do that about every every island shouldn't we the island of the Isle of Man the island of the Isle of Woman, no, yeah, the island of the Isle of Wight, the island of the Shetland Isles, the island of the Falkland Islands, or maybe that's the islands of the Falkland Islands. Oh, if the places are islands and not continentals. Um, Africa, India, America, Europe. I'm trying to think how many different countries in Europe are separate from the continent. Um, there's got to be some, hasn't there? The island of New Zealand, the island of Australia. The island of Thailand. Thailand's separate, isn't it? The island of... Uh, 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 the, the icebergs, the island of the icebergs. The island of oh Bermuda, I think, and the island of Bergerac. Yeah, it's quite a few different ones. Yeah, so I've been to five different countries. Uh, Bulgaria, S France, Spain, what's the other one? Belgium and Ireland.
the Bel- obviously Belgium is not the island of Belgium is it it's uh, but it is Belgium I think if I ever had disability issues like physical uh, issues with walking or anything I'd definitely move to Belgium just flat so flat that you can just you just need a sail stick a sail on the back of your wheelchair and and just aim it for where you want to go of course you'd need some wind but it's just flat there's there's no it's like a really hilly place but with all the hills filled in or the the valleys filled in rather or it's like a place a a valley place with all the valleys filled in that makes sense wouldn't it but it's completely flat never been anywhere as flat as that I've been to Amsterdam is that a country That's a country, isn't it? Yeah, I've been to Amsterdam as well, so I've been to six countries. Forgot about that, which is weird. Oh, I remember I was never going to mention it to anyone ever. Oh, never mind. Yes, I've been to Amsterdam. Never been to Germany. I mean, Holland. Holland is a country so is is Amsterdam a town because Amsterdam is in Holland isn't it or is Holland a city Uh, uh, is Amsterdam a city in Holland Holland land So I've been to Holland, so that's six different places. Went to the Anne Frank's Museum. Um, See, when I was reading that book, I thought to myself, they're all squashed in this tiny little attic. The place is massive. It's, it's it took about an hour to get around it mind you I mean I can imagine it being annoying well apart from everything else is all these displays and you banging into all that stuff you know, that one must have got in the way of everyone when they were living up there It's amazing. So many people on bikes. A lot of people on bikes. Couldn't really work it out. I mean, I'm talking about adults on pedal bikes. You know the things that children use that you know we all kind of used when we were as children but there were adults on them and I, I thought that maybe it was uh, it was I don't know some kind of big prank on me I just I thought that's, a, that's gone to a lot of expense to make that many bikes just to as a joke But they they were riding around on the bikes like it was almost normal and I'd never seen that before you know I've, I lived in England 
for the majority of my life style and you know where I live now there's the occasional person on a bike and generally generally people ride on the pavements and the ones that do ride on the on the what's the thing that is in the pavement the road that's it those that do ride on the road uh, they only seem to go on a road when there's a bus so they can ride right in front of the bus and slow the bus down and only when I'm on a bus only the bus that I'm on it's almost like they're just waiting for me to get on the bus needing to be somewhere Yeah. But it's not that often that I see somebody riding on a bicycle. And in Amsterdam. I was a little bit a taken back because they also I mean it was like going back in time they had these well all I can say trams they had trams something that we used to have um in the 1800s or that begin begin the 1900 1920s or whatever we used to have trams in this country and there's a few old fashioned places like I think Manchester Liverpool I think they've still got trams which I was very surprised I went to Manchester I didn't go to Manchester I went through Manchester and I had to get on a tram it's like honestly it's like being in a time machine going back to a place where it has a tram a tram and they're really good they're really cool they're kind of they're like buses and trains mixed together tram, train, tram so they have the regularity of a bus but they're on tracks like a train and I don't know it's, it's I don't know it's kind of like Like a little antique dream. I'm just watching something as I'm talking to you. And there's a bloke sweeping. It's uh, the Sweeney's on. A TV show called The Sweeney. And the man is brushing the steps. And the policeman's running towards him at the bottom of the steps and the man with a brush starts brushing quicker and quicker as he moves up the steps so he's kind of running but he's still brushing the steps at the same time I'm going to get arrested but I want to make sure I still do my job very strange I've seen this episode before, but it's very, they're all old, very old uh, programs from the 70s.
the Sweeney, the, what's the other one? The Professionals. Very gritty, very, not a huge amount of humour. <laughs> very, just a bit, uh, I don't know, probably good at the time. But I was too young to watch them because they were adult. But they was, seemed to take themselves quite seriously. A little bit seriously, just a little bit. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm going to probably know more about it if I had the volume up. I'm just basing it on his uh, quick sweeping of the steps. And it's, uh, it's not a lot to go on, really. I summarise all six episodes or seasons or whatever of the show. Well, now he's run off. He's running, and as he's running, oh, Roy Kinnear's on there now. Now, Roy Kinnear, he was a very famous actor in the English um, dramatic, thespian, environmental, television, theatre world and he did loads and loads of stuff and he was funny he was this kind of short fat man and he was got a big got funny he wasn't always funny but he even in serious things like this he's still quite a bit of humour There's a lady there with him. I don't know who she is, but I love her. You ever see someone you just love them straight away? Yeah. I love her right now. It's probably about 90 now. For at least 30 then and that was in the 70s so 77 75 so 75 let's say it was 79 79 and she was 30 79 89 99 2009 2019 so 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Yeah, it should be 70. But I think this was probably 75, 1975-ish. Possibly early R. Seventy. What am I? Forty-nine. Yeah. They had trams in Amsterdam, but unlike with Manchester. Trams in Amsterdam are just, there's lots of them, all going in different directions. I've never seen that before in my life. I think it's quite cute really, holding on to sort of traditions, you know. I suppose that's why it's maybe quite nice that we still have things like the royalty and uh, well, the countries that still have it. 
I'm not sure if the French have. Did they have royalty in France? I'm sure they used to. I saw a film about it. They were all queuing up outside to have their pictures taken or something. I don't know. Mind you, it would have been hard work. Imagine being a royalty in, in France times with all those big wigs, those big white wigs and what do they used to have for all that um, powder to make themselves look really pale and in fact they still have the same wigs in courts I think that's another thing in this I don't they don't have that, I don't think, in America uh, and other countries that are a bit more ahead of the times. But in our courts, we still have people with those silly wigs. And judges wearing a silly wig and a gavel. Now, I've never, well, not since I was a kid, I've not been in a court. And I'd want to respect a judge. <laughs> I would, I would. Just, it's, it's one of those things that's being brought up to do it, you know. It's like... Saying sorry when you knock someone over, or not knock, not not knock them over, but I don't know, just you know, general thing, just um, pretending you didn't fart, things like that. It's just, it's just uh, things that we're taught. What's that? L don't put your elbows on the table. I remember my brother did that, and my niece. It wasn't his kid, it was uh, someone else's kid. And I remember saying to her, oh, don't put your elbows on the table where you're eating. No, I didn't say anything. Well, I might have done, I can't remember. But what a ridiculous thing to say to a child. Don't put your elbows on the table when you're eating. How's that going to change their life? How's that going to affect the world? in a positive way it's like isn't, isn't there enough rules <laughs> aren't there enough rules already for us not to need to invent even more stupider ones that's my thinking what other silly rules are there? That, they're not rules, they're not laws, but they're just silly rules that. like societal rules. Oh, what was that when you were a new kid? Look at me when I'm speaking to you. Well, it's bad enough, I've got to hear your voice. Why won't I go look at your face? Look at me so I know that you're you're you you're hearing me. Well I can close my eyes and I can still hear you is something that I'd love to have been able to say, but that was too little. Plus I've only just thought of it. My dad used to say, use your loaf. Basically use your brain, use your loaf. How do you, how does someone get from brain to loaf of bread? How did that even? It's not rhyming slang, is it? I can't see how it could. Brain, bread, loaf, head, bread, head. Ah. 
use your head for irons of bread. A loaf of bread, use your loaf. It's Jen, that's where it came from. I generally just thought that up. Head, rinds of bread, and a bread is a loaf of bread. So you use your loaf. Now, I almost feel sorry for children in the olden days especially in a place where they had all these sayings whether it's rhyming slang or just you know wherever um, part of the country someone might come from so they'd be at school learning to speak English Or I suppose it could be the same way all over the world. Learn to speak the language of the country of their origin. You know, wherever they're living. English, in Spain, Spanish. In America, English. In Australia, English. In New Zealand, English. Um, you know, in Canada, English or French. Um, in Ireland English and perhaps Irish anyway the thing is so if someone's in England 100 years ago or 80, 70 years ago so they're at school the teachers are trying to teach them how to speak correctly And the teacher saying, so Joey, what does that word say? Don't know, miss. Well, what does it say? Don't know, miss. Well, it starts with, a, what does it start with? What's the first letter? S. Okay. What's the second letter? T. Okay. What's the, th what's the third letter? A fourth letter I miss okay and the last letter S what does it say what does it say then I miss How can you not know what it says? You can read the individual letters, but you don't know what it says. I don't know, Miss. Well, what does it say then? It says stairs. Oh, Miss, you mean apples and pears? Why didn't you say so? It must have been so confusing. They'd be at school learning to speak correctly. Then they'd go home. And the parents and their brothers and sisters and all be talking this garbled, weird, rhyming slang, made-up words, almost coded, coded words in case someone they don't know comes about and they can all talk secretly to each other. It's got to be complicated, I reckon. Apples and pears, down on the old Kent Road. Don't get too many of them to a dozen. Oh, oh. Uh, use your loaf. 
어, 어, I would vanquish them. <laughs> vanquish all of that stuff. Just speak with words. Now then, now we'll all get. Oh, I saw an interview years ago. It was this man. He was in a pub, and he was. It was. I think it was a documentary about tough people. And literally every three words was he said, "You know what I mean." You know what I mean? I was going down the road. You know what I mean? And this happened. You know what I mean? And it's, oh. no, I don't know what you mean. Can you explain it a bit further? Well, I took one step and then another step and then I reached a door. You know what I mean? Well, no. What kind of door was it? Well, it was green but with a yellow outline. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I've, I, I can picture that. Oh, good. You know what I mean. And when you say good, you know, do you, do you mean good? You, you're happy with the door, or good that you're pleased that I know what you mean? Do I know what you mean that you know what I mean? You know what I mean? He said, "Yeah, you know what I mean." I said, "Yeah, I do." Another one is get me. You get me. You get me. Every five words. You get me? I mean, in a way, that is quite a good communication tool. It's biofeedback, isn't it? You're saying something to someone, communicating, and you're, you're checking with the other person who's involved within that conversation checking that they are on board with what you're saying and are understanding the context and the content of the conversation and the words that you are presenting therefore there thou so in a way you get me is just a really annoying way of uh, checking that the other person's understanding what you're saying you get me so when I was in London in it used to be something that people used to say in it in it like that in it not just on its own it used to be part of a sentence it's cold in here in it and then in the 90s the 2000s the a certain group of people started saying it and they were trying to fit in some some people I say a group of people just some people I won't go into detail but some people started using the language use, using that in it but out of context so that it it didn't fit at all I don't know if it started off as a joke and it just continued and they forgot it was a joke they forgot that it was irony which can happen can't it in life um, like swear down that's something that my goddaughter's age started saying as a joke making fun of kind of rappers making fun of that that kind of uh, sphere of 
society who would be talking street or you know whatever you get me and uh, saying things like swear down and you'd see it a lot on Jeremy Kyle and but that's the thing people started using it for real and it was used ironically making fun of people that used it for real and then those people that were using it ironically just making fun of people that were using it for real started using it for real swear it down so it's quite funny I knew things had got really bad when uh, not really bad but um, I said something that I thought was quite funny to this person and they said uh, didn't laugh they said lol they actually said lol and I knew that I thought the future of comedy clubs is in trouble can you imagine go to a comedy club performing on stage and all you hear is just lol lol lots of people going lol that would be the end of comedy should be the beginning of comedy really but yeah it would be the end like it's the end of this recording yes it is mm. so if you're still awake I uh I'm going to make more recordings because I'm feeling better now than I was and I will be doing a deep sleep whisper recording very soon and I'll be doing a sleep hypnosis weekly recording very soon and uh, some others very soon so thank you for listening take care yourselves and remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy lots of love bye